Hi there. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the inner game. So what is the inner game? Well, before we can understand the inner game, we need to look and define what the outer game is. Now, the outer game is the thing that we're all very familiar with in business. OK, it is leadership, CEO 101. This is looking at the resources that are under your control, the humans who you report to and work with you, the time you've got available to you, the strategies that you enact, the very environment that surrounds you. That is the outer game. And the reality of modern leadership, um, certainly in terms of the leadership books that are out there, is all the leadership books are written about the outer game. Okay? All about writing strategy, all about managing resources, all about getting the most from your team, all about being master of your time, getting to inbox zero, creating time from nothing. Everything is always about the outer game. And the reality from what I've learned in working with the CEOs that I work with, that true mastery comes when you look at the inner game. Now, I didn't come up with this concept. This is a fantastic concept that I've taken from Robert Ellis in his great book, Coaching from Essence. Now, in that book, Robert talks a lot about the inner game and mastering of that inner game. So let's talk about the inner game. What does that mean? What does that relate to? So the elements of this really are in four parts, and let's work from the bottom to the top. The first of these is the capabilities. These are the things that you can do. Right? Maybe you're a fantastic public speaker. Maybe you're an incredible visionary leader. Maybe you're amazing at finances, at numbers, at data. Maybe you're a subject matter expert in marketing or sales or product or technology. Maybe you're incredible at writing. Whatever it is, you've got these capabilities that form the core skill set of you. Above that, then, you have things like your values, right? What do you stand for? What are you prepared to do? Um, these often come from your parents, from the experiences you've had in life. This is how you relate to and see other people. It's really what makes you you in terms of what you're prepared to do and not to do. The next one above that, then, is beliefs. When you talk about beliefs, we talk about the things that you have experienced in your life I suppose, truths that you know. Let's talk about one of these for an example. As an example would be working long hours equals success. Or being an expert in something like product or go to market or technology leads to success. Or maybe when I sell my business, I can finally relax and re-engage with my family and get back to life again in five years when I've made all that money. Maybe a belief is it's all about the team. Maybe the belief is it's all about the vision. Maybe the belief is it's all about the numbers. Whatever this is, this is learned behaviour you've got from the experiences you've had in your life. You've learned that from your mentors, from people you've, you value over time. Building upon the capabilities, values and beliefs, at the very top then we have your identity. And that's formed of all of these elements below. Right? You might identify yourself as a visionary, as a founder, as a hustler, you know, working long hours, doing deals, whatever it is. You identify yourself in this particular way, and that's built upon your beliefs, your values and your capabilities. And so this inner game really then interfaces with the outer game in terms of your behaviour. The two of them fit together with behaviour in the centre there, right? The way you behave influences how the outer game is played, right? How you lead on stage, how you lead in a meeting, how you talk to your team obviously impacts how those folks perform, how you build a strategy, how you think about the future. The inner game really defines the outer game for your organisation, especially if you're the CEO. In reality, it shapes the whole culture of the business. And I don't want to talk about the outer game because honestly, I find that stuff boring, right? It's not the stuff that's really going to have an effect. You're treating symptoms of something that's going to have a much more dramatic effect if you have a look at the inner game. And challenges can start to arise, especially looking at the inner game, when you have, so you can see that the parts of the inner game create your behaviour, how you interface with the world, how you turn up in the world, how you talk, act, write. Your very essence is defined by the inner game. Now, questioning this essence can be challenging at points and can be very difficult once you start to look and open that lid and look at your beliefs and your values and your very identity. We see that when, you know, there's a there's a challenge to your to to a belief or to a value, like people saying to you things like, no, I don't have to work in the office five days a week. I can still get as much done work done elsewhere when you've seen before that. No, people need to be in the office five days a week for work to to happen. Right. That's a belief that you have versus a belief that they have. And often that can be quite triggering because they're actually questioning you believe your your identity when they question a belief that's strong like that. You can find yourself reacting emotionally on both sides of that. And so the challenge can come when both your beliefs and your values and your identity are challenged. That's when you can emotionally react to a situation. Right? 
So maybe an employee isn't performing and what part of your belief about yourself is that anybody is coachable, that anybody's savable, that, you know, you can coach anybody to be great and they're not, and it's not working. Immediately you're questioning your inner belief and capabilities. You start to question yourself as a leader. You can start to get emotional and angry at these things. So by mastering this inner game, you can truly master the outer game. So a lot of what I do and what I will share next week in the follow up to this is all about mastering that inner game. How do you comfortably look at your identity, your beliefs and your values and start to update and edit them to be more in service of you so you can, again, behave differently and have more of a dramatic effect on that outer game. If you want to stay in touch and be prepared for that next episode, hit the little bell icon up there. That means you'll get all the updates from me, either on LinkedIn or YouTube. Thanks very much for your time. And I'm looking forward to talking more on the inner game with you next week.